I want to introduce Maru Wakuka, who is a, a friend, an esteemed artist, um, a very passionate and involved community member who works with Spark as a lead artist for our paint nights, along with many other things that she does with Spark. She attends and participates in paint jazz. She's done uh, community-based murals uh, for paint salsa. And so she's a part of our family. We thought we would start our series by interviewing her with maybe some questions that I had and maybe some questions that you also had. Okay. So welcome, Madhu. Thank you. It's a pleasure to see your face. Yes, in these times in of virtual who knows where. Exactly. In exactly. my kitchen. It's good to see your face too. I'm in my studio, as you can see the clutter. Oh, that's great. Yeah. But my first question for you, Madhu, was how do you begin a painting? <laughs> um, first, I take a nap. After <laughs> my canvas is ready, I go to sleep in the studio. Doesn't matter what time it is, there and night. I just lie down. I guess it's a meditation, but I feel like I'm dreaming the painting first. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just make a mark anywhere on the canvas, just to break the whiteness of it. And I, get, I generally have a vague idea of what I'm going to paint. Mm -hmm. I never have a finished sketch or anything like that. It's a, it's a general idea. I know what's in my heart and what's on my mind. And I start creating images and have a conversation mm -hmm. with the canvas. I think that's really admirable. Uh, <laughs> given the beauty of your work. Uh, another thing that I think is really admirable is how large you are able to work sometimes. Can you tell me why do you work large? What's important about working large to you? Um, even though I seem like a very calm person, and I am, uh, I need to be moving. Uh, so the large canvas, I can move from one end to the other. Sometimes I have to get on a ladder or a step stool, and then I really feel like an artist, you know. Um, but I like the movement, and I feel that if I'm moving, the image moves. Mm -hmm. I also always have music playing, um, often loud and uh, active music. Sometimes, actually I have a lot of different music. I just sort of put it on a roll and the mood of the song or piece moves me in a certain way. Mm -hmm. So that becomes part of my imagery. But I feel like the movement is really important. I don't want to paint this, a painting that isn't moving. Uh, when I do figurative work, I am focused on people that don't matter, mm -hmm. um, either symbolically or specific people. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, years ago, there was a massacre in Mexico. And all these men were murdered and the women were left as widows and the children were all orphaned and they were very poor to begin with. Mm -hmm. So they went to the local city hall to um, to make a statement, to try to get help, etc. And there was a tiny photograph in a magazine, it was about this big, of these women with their babies and every single one of them was barefoot. And I decided to paint their portrait. And as I was painting, I thought, why am I doing this? <laughs> Here in the United States, it's even, uh, you know, no one even heard of this place, let alone care about it. Uh, and I just thought, well, if I don't do it, nobody's gonna do it. And it seemed important to me. I think I'm very connected to my Mexican roots. So, and it's not just in the, events that happen, but in my, my, my image making, it really is part of my DNA, the, the colors, the kind of images I create. Uh, I think it's influenced a great deal from my childhood in, in a city that was thriving and vibrant with public art, uh, murals everywhere, beautiful fresco murals. and. Uh, with the famous three 
muralist Diego Rivera, Siqueiros, Orozco, and also by Frida Kahlo's work. And, um, you know, my mother was a painter, so even though she wasn't painting, I knew she had been a painter and her oils were in the closet, you know, so it just sort of became part of who I am. And I think that still comes through. Um, I love teaching. I could, yeah, I, I enjoy teaching Spanish or uh, art. I like all ages. So Spark in particular is perfect for what I love because you have two-year-olds and 82-year-olds and everything in between. Um, I think teaching is fun. And I think it's just, um, as far as what I paint, it's freeing. It, it just loosens my, my hands, my mind. When you're um, teaching at um, an event like a paint night and you have this audience from mm -hmm. two to 92 and everything in between, mm -hmm. do you come in with one sort of thing that you would love everybody to leave with? Um, you know, some people obviously have more skill with painting. Children mm -hmm. are, you know, interested in mixing all the paints together and sticking their mm -hmm. hand in it. You know, everybody's entering from a different uh, standpoint. But what do you as an artist hope to impart as a takeaway for each person? Um, you know, the didactic part of me wants them to learn one thing at least. Mm -hmm. You know, like, uh, even if it's just what blue and red make or something, you know. Uh, but, you know, I really want them to learn how to use a brush or how to, how to, you know, I don't know, there's always something that really is gratifying for me that they learn. Uh, but mostly, I usually come after my day job to a paint night, because they're always on my Monday night, right? And very often I think, God, how am I going to make it through this class? I'm so tired and my mind is mush. Mm -hmm. And I get there and I just get the energy from Spark, from all the helpers that are amazing, and without it, I wouldn't do it. And, um, and from, the, from the students, because they come with their own positive energy. So I hope that they leave the class like I leave the class, which is feeling really happy. Mm -hmm. You know, it's uplifting to me to do the class. Um, and I figure if they are happy, they're gonna like art because it's a happy experience. Mm -hmm. and, and so I like to, I like them to feel good about what they did, about themselves. I like to, bring each kid up and show his work or her work and introduce themselves and some say something about the painting, which I think is a good thing regardless of what you're teaching or what they're learning, you know, just to be able to get up in front of a group of people that they mostly don't know and introduce themselves and speak up, you know, because it leads me to my other piece about my art and being an artist is in this time mm -hmm. where I feel we're on the brink of many things, uh, I think it's really important for people to speak up. So if they learn to speak up and to say, this is, you know, say, this is, hello, I'm over here and I'm, I have this much to say mm -hmm. and to be able to say it. I think if that, if they learn that, we've accomplished something. I totally agree with that. And, um, you know, initially, I thought people would be very shy about mm -hmm. getting up and talking about their work, but the overall atmosphere of a paint night seems to, it's like an environment where people feel comfortable, mm -hmm. safe, feel welcomed, and yeah. little kids or people who've never spoken before a crowd get up and talk about their painting. They receive so much warmth and appreciation. Yeah. I think it's, it's an, uh, such a, a key part of the Paint Night experience. And I believe that you are the artist that started doing that. And now yeah. it's become a part of our best practices. So thank yeah. you. Yeah, oh, well, I'm very happy to hear that. I remember one kid in particular putting her on a chair because she was so tiny. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, yeah. okay, let you stand over here and show everybody, you know. But it is, it's like 45, 60 people in the room. And it's this wave of 
Oh, that's beautiful. That's wonderful. Clapping. Congratulations. Clapping. Yes. yes. And the kid just, you know, they seem to overcome their shyness. Yeah. So, yeah, I love it. And all of the tools at our disposal include paintings, poetry, yeah, dance, um, things that touch the heart and soul. Um, Absolutely. So, so everybody can do something. Everybody. And children can do something. They can write letters. They can study. They can sure. read books and find out their history, mm -hmm. uh, find out what's happened before, uh, you know. but. You know, I, I don't, I also don't mean like everybody has to go around in a panic and freaking out. I think we need beauty. We need to feed our heart and our soul and our mind with, uh, with poetry and beautiful paintings and, or intense paintings. But, you know, it's not just about the intensity, but about the beauty and, and the love. Yeah. That love is at the center of everything good. Sure. I would say it's the I think Rumi said uh, love is the bridge between you and everything else mm, like that like yeah that. yeah well I want to thank you for taking this time yeah. out to be with us I mean I'm sure you and I, I can we talk for another hour at least right, right, but yeah. I want to keep it within like a frameable um, yeah. amount of time that people can like squeeze in or listen to while they're painting or whatever yeah and, um we don't know what will happen in the fall, but whatever we're doing, I do, we know that you're going to be a part of it in terms of Spark the Artmobile and the Center for Art and Community Partnerships. Yay. And we thank you so much for being a part of our family, contributing yes. to the beauty in the world. And we will be back in touch with you very, very soon. And thank you for everything you do, especially for this community. And I am a total fan. I think you're a hero. So. Oh. Thank you so much. Yes. All right. Well, I'm going to click off now and then I'm going to call you on your phone so we can talk. Okay. About this. Okay. All right. Take I'll good care. This, so, yes. Leave meeting. <laughs> right.